This is WXVT Delta News at 10. Welcome back to Delta News at 10. Tonight we are joined by Peter Nimrod, the Chief Engineer from the Mississippi Levy Board, to discuss the rising water. Peter, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. All right, I have just a couple of questions that a lot of viewers sent to us. Um, but first, is there anything that they need to know right now about the current state of the river? Well, right now we're at 60.7 feet, and sometime tonight we'll pass 61 feet, and that's significant because 61 feet is the 100-year event on the Mississippi River. Uh, so a lot of people made preparations for building their houses above the 100-year flood, and here we are tonight passing that elevation. Now, earlier today, um, we did see some water on top of the levee. What was that from? Uh, that was from a broken water line crossing the levee. A lot of people were concerned about that. Right, well, I can imagine everybody is concerned about a little bit of everything. So if they see anything out of the ordinary, they're, they're very concerned about it. But that's okay. We love for people to call us up, let us know what's going on so we can check it and verify it and make sure it's nothing wrong with the levy. Another very common question that viewers had were what were sand boils? And if right. they have them, who do they call? Right, uh, definitely call the levy board or call the sheriff's department or call uh, uh, MEMA, FEMA, not FEMA, but call the emergency management uh, director as well. Uh, let us know about that. Uh, sand bowl is basically when seep water travels fast enough underneath the levee that it actually carries material with it. Looks like a little cloud, like a dark little cloud, brings a little material up to the top. Uh, and we've actually found a few sand bowls. We found one sand bowl so far in Washington County, and that was um, off of Oak Meadow Drive, I believe, or Meadow Oak Drive. Uh, it was a little sand bowl. Uh, we've already tried to correct it. We'll monitor over the next couple of days, make sure we've got it fixed. We've also found some pin bowls. Uh, down in the wayside area as well. So uh, I'm loving it. I'm loving that the, that the public's getting out there and actually calling the levy board, calling the, the emergency people and letting us know about it so we can go actually go look at those and make sure it's not a problem. And I asked this next question to David Burford last night and I'm also going to ask you, um, will the levies be able to hold for the expected eight to ten days when it is at crest? Right. Uh, that is a challenge, but we, we passed the challenge back in 2008. Uh, we got to 57.4 feet and we sat there for 10 days and, and things did happen. A lot more seawater came out. Uh, I think we'll be able to pass it just fine, just based on the 2008 event as well. And right now, are there any areas of concern along the levee system? Well, you know, our main main concern was Buckshoot way down near Eagle Lake and uh, the Corps of Engineers came in and actually fixed that area for us. Uh, I feel very confident with that area. The only concern I really have at this point is the Yazoo Backwater Levee uh, because with a forecast down at Vicksburg of 57.5 feet, uh, that levee overtops at 56.3. So there'll be a little over a foot overtopping that levee. So we are busy armoring that levee uh, with poly sheets to make sure that when it does start overtopping, it doesn't erode the levee away. So uh, we're trying to maintain that levee's integrity uh, so that in the end when the water does subside, the levee's still standing and it does hold the water back. Most viewers and most citizens, they do have confidence in the levee system, but some viewers are worried they want to evacuate. Uh, they want to know what the evacuation plan is. Is there a safe zone that they can go to if there is a breach in the levee? Well, uh, we don't anticipate any kind of breach in the levee at all. The only thing, like I said, is the backwater levee overtopping. In an overtopping event, the water would come very slow, and even if the levee would breach, it would take days for it to reach the rolling fork area. So people would be notified about the breach. They would know they'd have to, to move. It's the best thing to do if you live in the South Delta portion of the area. If you do hear that the levee breaks and get official word, don't just jump on it. Uh, make sure that it is official. Uh, do start gathering your things together. You've got time uh, and just head north. Uh, in the worst case, just take Highway 61 and head to Greenville because uh, with an overtopping levee of that uh, backwater levee and it does breach it, and we're not expecting it to at all, but if it does, uh, Greenville will not flood from that type of event. And one question that we had from a viewer that I thought was pretty interesting because I didn't know the answer to it was how much of the levee is reinforced? Is the top 15 feet not reinforced? Um, the, the levee is just dirt and when they built the levee it was compacted in the best it could be. Uh, it was made out of a clay material so that it doesn't, uh, the water can't penetrate it very well. So uh, it is definitely not reinforced. It's just a pile of dirt that has been compacted over time. So, uh, and, the, and the longer it's there the better it compacts. So uh, we got a great levee system uh, following the 19, 1927 flood. Uh, you know, our levee system was raised 10 or 12 feet. Uh, we've added uh, landslide seepage berms. We've added relief wells. We've really improved that levee system over the years. So I think we will, we'll pass this event with no problems. And if you could speak a little bit about the sandbags that will be going on Main Street and Central, is that correct? That's right. We do have two low areas on our levee right here in downtown Greenville, Central Street and Main Street. In fact, that was the old 1927 levee, the top of the levee. Uh, so those notches have been in place since 1927 or before that. 
Uh, so when they raised the levee up 10, 12 feet, they left the notches there for access for boaters uh, to get to the city wharf. Uh, we will fill those in. We're not predicted to get to that high, but we decided let's go ahead and fill them in just in case the forecast goes up. So tomorrow we will be filling those uh, low spots in with HESCO barrier walls. And another question that um, a viewer had is, at what height is the Yazoo backwater levee expected to overtop? Right, uh, at the Vicksburg gauge, uh, 56.3 feet. That's an elevation of 107 mean sea level. That's when it will start overtopping. Okay. And they're predicted that to be about May 15th. And for viewers who want up-to-date information, besides getting information from the news, where can they go and who do they call? Um, you know, call the Levy Board office. Uh, mm -hmm. You can call uh, Emergency Management. Uh, you can look at a deltacouncil.org website. Uh, they've got some really good maps on there, uh, inundation maps and things like that. So there's a lot of information out there. FEMA's got some stuff. MEMA's got some stuff. So look on, online and check all those set websites out. All right. Well, thanks a lot for joining You're welcome. us. Thank you. All right. Well, that's it for us. But stay tuned for your Sunday night sports special with Brian Eccles.